Hello, this is Jim, and life is a joy, I'm telling you. It's been a long day. This is Monday. I expected to start on my electrical today. Didn't work out that way. Um, my batteries still haven't come in. So without batteries, it's kind of hard to do uh, all the electrical that I want to do. Did a lot of work today, but uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, calm evening. My hardware came in when I got home about 6.30. It was on the porch. So guess what? I did get to put up my last, uh, my last solar panel just now. It only takes me about 15 minutes to put one of these solar panels on. Uh, they are kind of heavy and carrying them up the ladder is not easy. But other than that, it's pretty easy. And uh, these are the things I was waiting for to be able to mount these uh, so this solar panel correctly so um, my vents are still usable they're also my emergency exits so right now I have uh, two panels on the very back of the bus and uh, then I have five in the middle and uh, these are all 335 watts. And then on the very front, I have the last one. So I have a total of eight panels on top of my bus. Well, good morning, good morning. Hey, uh, it's Tuesday morning, not Monday, but I'm very excited because my friend Steve is coming and he's going to uh, help me do the electrical on the bus. Uh, I still don't have my batteries. I think the guy I'm buying my batteries from may be uh, sick. He's been uh, having a little problem. I think maybe he went to the hospital or something, but haven't been able to get a hold of him in about a, or in touch with him for about a week. Looking for, for eight batteries from him, DECA batteries is what I'm buying. And he has them and has a great price, but it's just uh, impossible to get hold of him right at this moment. So, Steve and I are going to go ahead and do all the rest of it uh, today. We're going to try to, at least most of it, we're going to try to get uh, all the old boxes mounted, wires pulled to the solar panels, all those kind of things. Uh, hopefully, I'll uh, put this in a, in a way that you can understand it. And me too. <laughs> Okay, now this is my buddy Steve that you've been hearing about and uh, he is an electrical genius electronics and uh, Electrical engineer and he is just absolutely awesome. So we're gonna have fun today And I'm gonna uh, pay him a hundred dollars for saying that when I get enough of it saved up <laughs> So life is a joy and we're gonna get a lot done today I'm so excited that Steve is here and also Daryl and there she is, soaking hey, up morning. the sun right and, there. And it's a beautiful day in Colorado. Yes, it is. <laughs> so these are my inverters. I have two inverters. I have no idea how they work, what they do, but Steve probably will tell me, so you'll get to hear. Um, I know he just told me a while ago that you can hook them up to your computer. And uh, so that you can, that here's a deal to be able to hook them up to your computer. And then you can program them and everything from your computer. Wow. I'll have to figure that one out. Okay, now, do you have a PC Windows-based computer at all? Oh, yeah, I do have one. Okay. I have one. I, I just don't... What I use for all my stuff is Mac for right. my video and everything. Well, but that, I do the have software for this is, is Windows only. So okay. Well, I've got one. It's computer. six years old. It's plenty. I, okay. I've, I've got an old computer that has Windows XP on it that we use to program Dwayne's <laughs> inverter with. So. That girl for getting they excited. Her, yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, your uh, this is your positive and negative for your battery. Your this is your photovoltaic in negative and positive. That that'll come in from our combiner boxes. Okay. And then this is your relay control normally open normally closed and common you can program your inverter to close the contacts or open the contacts on the relay based on what your battery voltage is 
Okay. So if your battery voltage gets up to a certain point and you've got an electric uh, heating element in your water heater, you can kick that electric heating element on and do a load diversion to that. Okay. Um, of course, the USB is for your computer. You've got negative and positive for your uh, battery connections here. And then down here, th these two are your AC out. So that's going to supply your AC to your entire uh, bus. Okay. And then this will go to your generator. And then this is your frame ground, basically, in this okay. case. So those are the connections on that. It's all in one box, where in my house, I've got two separate boxes to do everything that this one box does. Okay. <clears throat> now, in this case, you've got two separate inverters, and that's to, su that's to meet all of your demands in here at one time. <clears throat> now, there's a couple of different ways that we can wire your panels up to this. We can split the panels between the two so that they're, they're both kind of sharing. You know, one of them's got half the panels, the other one has the other half the panels. Okay. Or we can run everything into one combiner box and put it into just one inverter because they're, they're both big enough to handle all the panels you have. Okay. As far as your panels go for charging batteries. The, what that buys you is you've got redundancy, so if, if this one crashes, then you can just move your panels over to your other inverter and keep charging your battery. The generator's going to be the same way. We're going to hook up the generator to just one of these, because what okay. it's going to do is it's going to pass the power through to your bus when it's running, and it'll charge the batteries at the same time. Okay. So that'll just go in, in into these connections. And the same thing, if, if you're charger from your generator ever goes out in this one then you can just move your wires over to this one and keep going so it gives you some redundancy that way awesome so that that's kind of that's going to be your choice on the photovoltaics if you want to split it between the two or if you want to run everything into one my choice is whatever you say <laughs> whatever well, you say works is what i want that's exactly okay exactly what we want to do are so, you still recording here yeah i'm just going to leave it okay. on okay um, well, what I'm thinking is if we, you've got eight panels up there, right? Yeah, let me, yes, I do. Eight panels. And 335 is what they're rated at, but I don't think they give that much according to what I read. Right, yeah, that you won't, because your, your panels are never perfectly perpendicular to the sun. Right. And, um, since mine are flat, there's not going to be too many hours that they're going to get. Right very much direct sunlight so on your box here since you've got eight panels up there and you've got we we'll just put four you, you've got box. eight spaces uh -huh. we can we can put four into each box or we could run all your panels into one box because you're only going to be yeah you're going to be using eight so you got two four six actually you only have six circuits so we'd still have to use both boxes. So okay. it doesn't matter. And so based on what we've got here, I would say what we'll do is we'll run half the panels to one inverter and half to the other inverter. Okay. And the reason for that is because there's just, you max out at six spaces in this thing. Because okay. you, we, we have to run we have to run one bar as negative and the the other bar is positive. So like this okay. would be negative, this would be positive, or however it is we choose to do it. And then uh, we'll have to have these breakers hooked up in tandem, like tandem breakers, because one of these will be negative and one will be positive. Okay. And we have to do that on an ungrounded system. So if one of them trips, you want it to trip both of them. Okay. That's the reason we have to have the little tandem connectors in between them so you're oh, gonna do i have those i don't know i sent you the i sent them to you on the list thingy that i sent. then i if you sent them to me i ordered them but that doesn't okay. mean i got them okay they're just little plastic <clears throat> that makes them both kick right okay and you can I even can you can even use a locally. piece of wire or something okay. if that you can use anything to do that with. okay that sounds good so, so on fitting these in here let's see um this just goes over and i'm going to hook it up where i can use it with shore, shore power in case i put my uh far infrared okay. so where does there. the other end of this go go straight across the bus comes out on the other side over there 
and it's a big and heavy that's for wire. Your sauna. Yeah, but it only it runs on 110. But I just okay. went ahead and put a, a number 10 wire. What's the rating on that sauna? I don't know. Have you got a plate on it that has the specs on it Probably. There somewhere we could look at? Probably, yeah. Let me just stop this thing. So these will go to like a fuse or something. Okay. That we'll need to get to. An inline here. fuse. Okay. The only other thing that we could just do. Just put it on one side or both sides? Um, preferably both sides. Okay. We, we can alternatively get like a square D QO mains okay. breaker that's rated like 200 amps. Okay. That would be just an outdoor box. But those things come in really huge boxes and... Okay, well and we can just find... Could, we could mount it next to the batteries, I guess. Well, whatever you need. I got the money, honey, if you got the knowledge. <laughs> okay. What we need to get is some either connectors. I'm not sure if these are the... I don't remember what they're called, MC connectors and then T-something connectors, I don't really remember. But we, if they don't have these, then we're going to have to find some kind of a weatherproof splice to do eight of these panels. Because we're going we're gonna to do each panel, every two panels are in series. And then all of those are wired in parallel. So the parallel runs will go down to your box. So we won't need any connectors for every other one. So like the, the the positive on this panel will go to the negative on that one. Okay. And then the two wires that are left over, positive and negative, will go down to the combiner box. Okay. We're going to need a total of eight UV resistant outdoor splices to go from 12 gauge to 12 gauge would be fine. Because it's going to be a higher voltage. There will be less voltage loss. Eight UV resistant splices splices outdoor splices a lot of times it's got kind of like a, like a heat shrink tubing and whenever you whenever you put the heat on that uh -huh. then it's got this goopy kind of stuff that sort of melts and gets all around the wires and it keeps the water sealed out you got it um, but if they have these MC connectors I forget if they're called MC4 or what they're MC something or T something and I don't it. Are you going to take a picture of it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of course, everybody comes out with their own kind of connectors that they say is better than everybody else's. And the bad thing is, the two different styles that are most common these days look very similar, Much alike, almost yeah. identical. So I'm going to take a picture of this guy. Would the little tag on there tell you anything? I think it's just uh, it says caution: do not disconnect. Oh yeah, warning deal. Under load. So anyway, you basically take like, you know, this negative, this negative will just plug into that positive wire. Okay. And then this, this positive and that negative will then go to your combiner box. And then from your combiner box to each of so the... So it'll be, yeah, so, so we'll connect the last two, the next two, the next two. We'll, we'll connect them together like that. Correct. Then. Then we'll bring all the wires to what? To one point in the middle? To one point somewhere. And come yep. through. Okay. Bring them down. So you'll need enough 12 gauge wire to make eight runs. Okay. From up, from up on the roof to down there. Okay. So you're talking what? 10 feet. So you're going to need a 125 foot roll of wire at least. Okay. Or worry about the lug bolt and split bolt connectors when you get the batteries. What are these guys rated at? 1600 watts? Is that what? 3,000 watts. No kidding. It's a lot of power, brother. So you're going to have 6,000 watt capable power. Okay. All right, so we need... Eight batteries are enough though, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to need a fuse or a disconnect. Well, I started shooting this while you are up on the top, so we've been shooting this guy for a while. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, we need, a, we need a 200 amp, either a disconnect or a fuse. That'll get us our panels coming down. That gets... All right, so we need to wire your generator up, too. Yes, sir. And uh, So that one's the one we can use like an air conditioner disconnect on. And here's what it has on it right now, which is not a disconnect. It does have a box on it. Well, actually, that's for breakers. 
And we could bring this up in somewhere and then all you need to buy is your breakers. What brand is this? Siemens. Siemens, okay. So you want to get a couple of Siemens breakers? Uh, you want to get a Siemens double pole? That's what I, that's what I think you should have, the double pole. That's what it looks like it's yep. easiest. Yeah, that'll produce more than you'll ever use. It's at 14.9. Yeah, you'll, you'll never so. use that. The only time you'll use that is when you're using it to weld out here somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll probably, I'll probably just put a, uh, also put a 220, just a plug-in. I'll probably yeah. just put a 220 plug-in there that I can plug into if I ever need it, which I'll only use on the on this. Well, actually, we could put a plug on that, so you could plug the inverter in or your welder or whatever you wanted to use. Yeah, because there's no plugs come on this one. Right. So we could make it pluggable. That way, if you wanted to do welding, you just unplug your inverter and plug your welder in. Okay. If you want to do that. Now, will this have? Will this? Will those operate this so they'll kick it on if it's needed to charge the batteries, or do I have to? They can. You can. You can program this relay as a dry contact for your generator. Well, I so can. So if your generator takes a dry contact, unless you train me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you turn this switch on, that just does that start it and get it going and everything, or? Well, if it's hooked up to a battery. You just put that to run, and you push that button, and it, that's the starter button. Okay. You don't have to choke it because it's propane. Right. It's got a choke on it, but it's propane. Okay, well, add a Siemens breaker to your list. Okay. Double pole. Um, let's see. If there's a, you want a 15-amp double pole? Fifteen or twenty? Break fifteen? Fifteen ought to be able to run okay. even a welder or water heater or anything. Okay. I mean you can get if if all they have is twenty, that's fine. It'll it'll be fine. See this, I'm, I haven't installed this particular model yet, so we've got everything for the P V coming into this. Have you got a little bit more of this ten gauge wire here? Um Yes I do. Yes, yes I do. Okay. Um, let me see how much I have. Okay, so this is your welder that you use, and it's 120. I've got five welders, four welders. I've got yeah. lots of welders. And you got some that are My other one's 220, but I don't... It's a stick welder, and I always welded with a stick welder, and I loved it. But this is so much easier than a stick welder, I can't believe it. We've got everything pretty much set that we need to get. We just need to get it. So there's no connectors going into those inverters. Right. They're they're uh, they're bare wire. They're set screw connectors. Yeah. Okay. You just stick the bare wire in there and cinch it down. Okay. So I guess we're ready to go get our pieces. What time is it? Is it even close to lunchtime? If you're you know lunchtime is whenever you're hungry. It's eleven thirty. Well, I'm hungry. <laughs> That's when lunchtime is. Yeah. <laughs> And here are the boxes. These are our QO boxes. They'll come, will come down from the solar panels to these two boxes. And then right here behind it, uh, these are our inverters. And charge controllers. And charge controllers. And these actually are, what, 6,000 watts a piece? 3,000 watts each. 3,000 watts each. And they'll run in parallel to six. Okay. Six kilowatts. Awesome. Here's our boxes from the outside. All right. So let's talk about this breaker panel a little bit. We're going to use... Now this is a home line series. This isn't what we'd use for DC, but this is just to demonstrate. So we could call this lug negative and this lug over here positive. This will be a true ground. Okay. So that your ground will go all the way up to your panels and tie to the rail to ground your rail all the way back to this bus. And then this will go to your bus ground. And then you, there's there's also this screw hole here that you can take this green screw inside of this package and run it through this and that bonds your ground to the box. Okay. 
and then you'll take off of this lug and then you'll attach to the frame on your bus anywhere okay on, on both panels actually everything and then your breakers again just for the purpose of demonstration so you see that these two lugs both go to this right. they're actually these three here all go to this one if we call that negative then that means all your breakers fit on this thing so you can see that this breaker here you're gonna edit all this right yes just like I did you on them bees uh, right right <laughs> just like you promised me you wouldn't show <laughs> so um, anyway you can see that these three here would be like the negative that means this breaker goes to the negative on your panels and right. this one goes to this other lug which is every other lug which would be your positive and that's for the QO breakers. That would be for the right. QO. This, this is the rest a, of this will hook up just like you would a house. Right. Because these, that, will, that, these will both be hot. That will be your ground up right. there. Right. Okay. Now what we're going to do on your on your bus here, because because your bus doesn't have any 240 volt, uh -huh. we're going to have to jump her between these two. Okay. Because it's all just a, it's not a split it's phase. It's all 120. It's a single phase. Right. right. It's all 120. So we'll just run a jumper between these two and then all the breakers are just 120 volt breakers. Piece of cake. It's very easy. Yep, I understand that part. It's that DC part. Yeah, the DC is <laughs> as easy as AC. Don't run. Okay, where's, where's a pencil and a piece of paper? Is it okay to write on this? Well, yeah, I got tons of stuff. Yeah, it's okay. a... Well, I just wanted I to use make that. sure that wasn't something you wanted to keep on. No, 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 no. Okay, so I'm going to draw out a little diagram for your batteries. Okay. And let's assume that you're going to be using 12 volt batteries. Okay. I, I think you're going to end up with 6 volt, but the concept's the same. We're going to say 12 volt batteries, and if you're wiring up three banks of 12 volt batteries, mm -hmm. here's what here's what we end up with. So, um, you got a 12 volt battery here. 12 volt battery here and then a 12 volt battery here and here and here and here and then each one of these are plus minus plus minus plus minus but I'll have eight right okay. if, if you've got if you've got six volt batteries okay because whenever you're wiring these up when you wire them in series, negative to positive, and if this is 12 volts, you end up with 24 volts between right. the two batteries. So now we've got 24 volts coming out, and it works the same between all of these. Right. So if you got six volt batteries, you're gonna you're gonna do four to make up a bank of 24. So now on your setup. Let's say for the purposes of discussion, even though your main breaker is a 200 amp breaker, let's say 180 because 180 is more easily divisible by three. Okay. Which would be, what, 60 amps in each one of these? Yes, sir. So you got 24 volts. So whenever your your system, when your inverter needs 180 amps to supply the maximum power that you're going to consume in here at one time, instead of it pulling 80 or 180 amps off of these two batteries, it's going to be distributed approximately by thirds between these batteries. Okay. So you got 24 volts, 60 amps coming out at each location. Now on this here, you you size your wire in this case for 60 amps so this number six wire that we've got over here mm -hmm. I th I'll have to look at my wire charts but I think it'll be fine for this so we can use it to wire between the batteries okay but then once we come out of our, our main fuse panel here where all these come in you know then this wire that's going to come out here to your inverter is probably going to need to be more like a one aught. Okay. Depending on length and amps and all that kind of stuff. Now, if it's a surge amps, I kind of split the difference a little bit because 
like a refrigerator is going to surge twice its capacity, your your air conditioner will surge to twice what it normally draws, but it's just for a second. Right. Yes. Sir. So even on the even on these cables, I would still tend to size these more for what you're running at than what you're surge at, but I'll still oversize it for the running okay. so that it still handles the surge fine. I would only I would only size these up for the maximum if you if you're pulling maximum more than a few minutes. Okay. So the wire that I brought you will be fine for these connections, but between here and the inverter, we might need a bigger wire. Get a bigger wire. wire. Okay, you got it. But I'll look at my chart and we'll see that for sure. Thank you, Steve. Yes, sir. You're awesome. Okay, you so you, you know how it goes at the bottom at the panel. So at the top, where you come in, and, and for house wiring, you're, you got... Okay, so you got your cable that comes up like this, and then you've got white, and then you've got the bare wire, and then you've got black. And in normal residential wiring for off-grid, before the ungrounded systems were approved, your black was positive, your white was negative, and then this ground would tie to your frame Correct. on your panels. Okay, so that's you've what got I'm... You've got four of these that are going to go up top. So we need, I need three more of those deals then. Yeah, well, you don't even need those. You could use a self-tapping screw with a big washer. Okay. And just cinch it in there good and use stainless steel. I'll do it. Okay. And you'll want to use a stainless steel washer against the aluminum and then your wire and another stainless steel washer and then your screw head. And you can use a self-tapping screw. Okay. And then, uh, and then that'll bond your... That'll bond your uh, frame to your bus and your electrical system. Okay, on the solar, uh, you want to use the QO breakers. And this, is, this wire is coming from my panels uh, on top of the bus. You want to use 15 amp breakers. And then you want to wire up your hot, uh, your positive, and your negative both go to a separate breaker. So I've run one, one piece of uh, Romex, it's uh, the UV rated, the gray, and I tie two panels together on top, and then I hook the positive to one side of the two panels, because you just plug the negative and positive together on two panels, and then the two wires that are left, you just, if you don't have the plugs, you just cut them and tie them into one side to the positive, one side to the negative. So this is one piece of Romex coming down from one panel, and it's on two breakers. I know that doesn't sound very clear, but <laughs> that's the way it works. And then here again, we have the positive and the negative. And uh, just to keep everything good and straight, I stayed consistent with this leaving my positive on the left side, my negative on the right side. We have the same thing down here. So I actually have two boxes because I need eight breakers. I have eight panels tying two panels together. That gives me four sets of panels. And then each set, each panel has its own wire. Pretty interesting. I've never worked with DC before. And then, of course, the grounds from those Romex tie right into our ground bar, our negative bar. And then inside this panel, it's kind of difficult to see. I stacked those two. Um, and then my inverters are right here. Each one of them are rated at 3000. Okay, very elementary, but this is an AC box. Very easy to wire, but some of you haven't seen these before. So uh, I like the square D is my favorite. Um, but the ground wire and the neutral both go into the the neutral bar up here or the ground bar okay so the white wire and the bare wire will both be tied in to this i use a 12 2 with ground for all for all my uh, receptacles and everything and uh, then the hot wire which is the black one that's a positive it goes into the bottom of your breaker and um, so I don't know if that helps too much, but it's very simple. You can do it. This is my 
AC box right here, which I am familiar with that one. And uh, that has six 20 amp breakers in it and that will go to all the different things inside my bus. So uh, pretty much uh, set up here, not quite complete, but uh, my goodness, I feel so much better than I did yesterday about how all this goes together. Oops. I've tied in my first two panels and uh, there's no way to really make it look good but I think I will get some vinyl paint and uh, paint over all these wires and everything so that they're white they'll kind of blend in a little bit may not be perfect but so far I think it's looking pretty good and uh, my main wires run on the back side of this that's why I have all these these ties, these zip ties on here. Um, wire that I ran was uh, the UV protected or underground and it's uh, 212 with ground. And this is the second one, haven't started on it yet, but uh, hey, we'll get all these done today. Okay, I've got another expert here that's working on my bus for me now. I don't know about experts. Oh yeah, this is James Millsaps, my son-in-law, and he is a fantastic mechanic. Thank so you. today he's figuring out all the um, the propane fittings. We've had to make a couple trips to the store so we can get the generator operating uh, off of the propane and get a, the battery set up back there so that we can. I have the starting power to the, to the generator. Ain't it great? Thank you, James. You are welcome. Okay, we're gonna fire up the generator. James is gonna fire up the generator. Doesn't have a muffler on it, so it's gonna be loud. Be loud. Uh, cutting the propane off works. Yeah. Well, I figure that out. Have to get another one of those then. It's good to hear it run, though. Yeah. Sounds like a Harley. Okay, we're getting ready to fire up my Harley again. That's what it sounds like without the muffler connected. You can see that the muffler is not connected there. All right. Ready? Uh huh. Wow. Just on is actually off. No, oh. it's on. I welded a little tray for my battery to sit in. And of course, this is where my, my air conditioner will go, right in front of that. And then my battery will be connected uh, to my generator. It'll have long cords because I, my generator has to be able to pull out. So there you go. 